Yes, people, it's LokiMan07 back with another YouTube video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about She Hulk, okay? Uh, one of my favorite characters in the Marvel Universe. And um, I, I want to talk about it, right? So I want to talk about this first episode. When I had the idea to make this video, I just wanted to make um, a quick review, basically. Quick review talking about the things that I like and dislike about the first episode which I usually don't do right but I, I kind of got a little thing for She-Hulk I, I like the character a lot but anyway I've come to the conclusion that who wants to hear that everybody's doing that let's just stick to what we do on this channel and we'll do a quick review and also quickly talk about some of the esoteric leanings of the show which you probably wouldn't get from this first episode but like I said I'm on it okay I'm on to what Disney are doing here all right so first of all we're gonna look at it on a two-dimensional level and then we're going to look on it at a three-dimensional level okay let's get into this so first of all you're gonna have to take what I say with a grain of salt I'm a little bit biased when it comes to She-Hulk but I thought the first episode was great. Um, it was a good setup. There's some good things. There's some bad things. But overall, I didn't come away from it being, um, you know, I didn't feel any bad things from watching it. I didn't, like I was entertained. The show is extremely feminine. Right? <laughs> I'll tell you that straight. Um, it's not. It's clearly directed at women it's and it's going to be directed at women but um <clears throat> it's okay um i think jennifer walters has always been directed at men but of course has always been a feminist character um the only difference is the way feminism is in the modern age is a little bit more different than it used to be and also it's it's um it's very aggressive now so the feminism that comes from she hulk doesn't seem as playful and as comical and just like in modern day has a bit of vitriol in it and a little bit of an aggression towards men now me being a, a man right and i hate to speak about the feminist paradigm but the show is clearly 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 addressing this okay so you know if you speak about the show you have to speak about the feminist aspect um so when bruce banner and um she-Hulk um, interact um, it's very much about the show is very being very clear that Jennifer Walters is th thinking about life and her gender is a thing that she thinks about and she's projecting that onto the Hulk himself and um, they made Bruce Banner literally mansplain. They literally wrote him mansplaining. And nothing that Bruce Banner was saying was incorrect. Um, he was just as knowledgeable as he's always been. Which was a good thing. But the way that they made him. The scenes act out. Um, it's just a man with knowledge. Speaking to a woman. Who also has. N the natural gift of feminine wisdom. All right. And like I, I, anybody who's on this channel knows what I talk about on this channel and how I evaluate these things. That stuff was done well. Trust me, that stuff was done well. Jennifer is supposed to represent a specific character from mythology and so is the Hulk. So um, the way they made her act, she has natural wisdom. She's the perfect one. I spoke about this the last time I spoke about She-Hulk since I... Because I understand these principles, I'm not being triggered by the uh, social aspect. Because Jennifer is a fictional character that is based on um, a deity. And that deity is about natural wisdom. So she isn't logical and articulate like Bruce Banner. But her, her nature is going to make her navigate things. Her intuition, her natural wisdom... Is going to make her navigate and perform better than him. And that is exactly from the comics also. That's why she has no 
um, psychological damages damages from becoming the Hulk or becoming a Hulk, what have you. Um, she's immune to everything that is Bruce Banner's problem. That's a thing, right? Um, and that's why I wasn't triggered by this episode. Uh, sorry to speak on the feminist aspect, but it's in the show. It's clearly there. <laughs> yeah, with that said, I, I thought everything was done well. I thought her, tr her, the way she got the blood was a bit weird. There was in a car crash and, you know, is it really that simple? Like, you just get some some blood by you and you start to turn into the She-Hulk. It mixes in a little bit with yours. Like, I mean, she had a blood transfusion in the comics because of the accident. She had to go to the hospital. They needed Bruce Banner's blood to save her life. It was a bit more dramatic. I thought that they kind of skimmed over it a bit there. Just made it a bit... They just, they just wanted to just get it out there real quick. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he some blood got on her and blah, 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 blah. All right. Um, I don't think that was good. Um, I, I don't think... <clears throat> well, once the origin story was over and I got back into the courtroom, and um, I think the friend character, her character's going to be annoying, like, um, but we'll see. But um, what happened was they're in court and Titania pops up and she hulk fights her for about 30 seconds it's a terrible fight the editing was terrible I don't, I don't think that was good that's one thing i'd say was not very good right it was like but it was only like 30 seconds of the whole thing but that wasn't good hope the fights aren't like that in the rest of the series i hope uh, things are more like the hulk and she hulk scuffle that looked amazing that was that was done well um yeah um so like I said, my brief analysis that yeah, it was it was a good setup. I was entertained, um, even though the show is extremely feminine. As a male, I think I can handle it. Um, I do think that feminism can ruin things. I'm honest on this channel. I do think feminism can ruin art, um, because feminism is very na 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 na. -na I told you, it's very immature. Right, so sometimes um, writing and characters are sacrificed, and we've seen it in the MCU. We've seen it in other things, because um, it's more about activism. And yo, I'm taking over your space and your shows, and you're gonna get my message, right? Which is a bit immature. It's silly, right? But you know, that's just my honest opinion. Let's hope that doesn't happen in the show. It does have traits of nana na 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 men. But I think it can be done well. We'll see. Okay, people. So now I'm just going to get into the um, three-dimensional level of things. And the things that... Um, the esoteric behaviours of Disney. Which they seem to be very consistent with. Um, so I'll give you an example. The last movie that came out was... Um, Thor Love and Thunder right and Thor Love and Thunder fell under the constellation Cancer right and um of course if you've watched the film you will know that Cancer was the theme um the Cancer represents death um as you already know as it is the word for the literal disease Cancer because Cancer means crab and crabs are kind of like flies they are, are attracted to decaying things so they are linked to death and destruction they're also linked to protection etc um <clears throat> and you'll see those themes as gore was the protector really he was trying to protect but at the same time he was death and destruction right it was a a very good ode to the constellation cancer and of course the, the show is uh, actually saying cancer a lot because of what's going on with Jane who actually has cancer um that's the type of weird things that Disney do when it comes to odes to the constellations star signs and the themes of their movies and shows okay um for example another example Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness 
fell under the constellation Taurus, which is ruled by the planet Venus, and the whole thing was an ode to the Mother Goddess. Um, um, it it showed the sign of the, the five pointed star, which is no, known as the five pointed star of Venus. All right, which America Chavez was using to to traverse the underworld. It was kind of like an Alice in Wonderland theme. I won't get too much into that. As you can see, it, even the color scheme of the movie was like Alice in Wonderland. Um, and of course, Wanda representing the Red Queen of Destruction, the other half, the two halves of the same coin. Um, I'll, maybe I'll get into that in some other works, but um, I can't get into all that now. But I just want to give you an example of what they do here, what they're doing here, right? So we're on episode one and it already starts because um, She-Hulk fell on a Thursday, um, the 18th of August, okay, um, and was an ode to Virgo, okay, the 18th of August represents Leo, but it's also coming up to the time where, where Leo is passing over to Virgo and I mentioned that uh, Leo represents the passing of the torch, the Lion King represents the passing of the torch, it's very um, you know it's that whole paradigm and as you can see the first episode is about the passing of the torch to the She-Hulk but what they also did was um, just want to say the word virgin okay I will get into that in a second now <clears throat> with the whole show coming out on thursday you will notice that disney keep moving the days around first of all their tv show started coming out on a friday then it went on to wednesday and now it's on thursday and it seems random but if you've been watching my shows and I, i'm talking about days and them hitting certain um certain astrological dates you'll see why this is happening disney has planned all of this way ahead of time we've known when these shows have been coming out years ahead of time they're working with calendars here i know it sounds crazy but if you've got an eye you can see you can see it's as simple as that um uh, disney has always been an occult entity um it just is what it is right so um <coughs> That's why these dates are moving around. And what you're gonna see is an ode to Virgo in this show. All right, so first of all, in episode one, they've got this stupid running joke about Captain America, and it seems random, and men don't understand it, of course, because it's silly. But the joke isn't really directed at men. Like I showed, said, this show is directed at women. So it's like female banter. That's more like female banter than masculine banter. That's all it is. It's not funny to men. It's not really a joke. But it's that's how women entertain themselves. It's as simple as that. They they joke around like that, talk about things like that, and it's been in the show because the show is really really feminine, right? But the whole point of this is Captain America a virgin. That is dialogue that um, people. That MCU fans that are female have spoken about. I've actually heard this conversation before, <laughs> right? And um, they've put it in the show because you know they're aiming at the female fan base and they're doing Easter eggs for the female fan base. But however, the reason why they're putting it in this show is because Virgo literally translates as virgin, okay? Yeah, so basically they just want to say the word virgin a couple of times in the show because the show is um, it, it's going to be playing throughout the constellation of Virgo and it's going to transition over into Libra. Now, um, I will get all into that stuff if I do an occult study on this show. Um, we're, we're obviously going to get a lot of virgo symbology we can tell from the trailers since the virgo represents the maiden the innocent maiden there are i always talk about there's a right side up and an upside down so there will be a right so 
the whole thing of speaking about Captain America is just to mention virginity, which literally translates to Virgo, of course. But um, there are two sides of the virgin. I always talk about the upright version and the upside down. So the upright version of the virgin is obviously the innocent virgin, Virgin Mary. And the upside down it is the uh, um, curiosity aspect or you know the whore aspect which is um the magdalene aspect right so you got mary right side up mary upside down right um they're going to go into both aspects in this show um just combined into one so see she hulk herself literally represents the sexual awakening or coming into female awakening of Jennifer Walters. Jennifer Walters is the quiet, nerdy, goody two shoes, right? She Hulk is the sexual being. You can tell by the way they're doing their hair and everything, the way they're doing She Hulk's hair in comparison. She Hulk's obviously super curvy, super fit. Um, she's supposed to represent um, sexual awakening, and of course, as you can see in all the trailers, she's going to be dating. She's going going to be uh, um, like a virgin getting a new female body like a teenager like a teenage girl that's what she's going to be doing and she's going to be exploring men in ways that jennifer walters couldn't representing virgo or the maiden all right and this is going to play out for a couple of episodes her exploring her self i explained this in my last version like coming to grips with the she hulk powers so that's why that stuff is in the trailers but then as you get further into the episode, you're going to get to Libra, which is about the law, the scales of law, right? And like I said, I'll get all into that when I, if I do a, a cult breakdown on this show. But obviously, the, the show is called, um, it, well, the show is basically based around the whole aspect of, you know, law, right? She's going to be at a lawyer firm. Right, none of that's by accident either. Since since lockdown, right, since lockdown, Disney have stopped hiding, right? Like they had this stuff in it before, but right now as a witness it, it is more blatant than I've ever seen. Like like I said, like look what I described about the uh, Thor Love and Thunder. Right, it's right there, it's right there. Oh, I almost never mentioned this as well, right? That's something that I've plucked from the trailers, right? Um, why is Wang there? What is this thing about this weird magician, right? All I got to say is the magician is ruled. I mean, the magician is Mercury, okay? Represents Mercury, the magician card, the ace, right? The number one. Now, what is Virgo ruled by? It's ruled by Mercury. There's going to be some magician jokes going on just like the virgo virgin joke get ready for that and it's it's going to last a lot longer than the the, the captain america virgin joke if that's ever mentioned again but just pay attention to um the aspects of magicians and of course um she hulk's beha sexual behavior right that's all i'm saying right um like um but like I said, really enjoyed the show. Really enjoyed the show. Um, it is extremely feminine. Extremely feminine. But I think I can make it. I think One Division was feminine and was done extremely well. Um, and I think this might be done well as well. I, don't, I, I know a lot of people didn't like One Division for certain reasons. But I think it was one of the best written female characters in anything to do with superheroes i've never seen a superhero character written as well as wonder was in one division um and she was extremely feminine as well which was really really good um not in the the um flawless way because she's of course the lilith paradigm she's she's naturally flawed but um i, I look forward to to watching this whole series um, hopefully it's not something like Miss Marvel where it's so, it doesn't just degrade into just terrible writing. It's hard for me to consistently watch Marvel TV shows now because they're not actually that good, right? Even though I loved all of the stuff in Moon Knight, I didn't actually think that this TV show was actually that good. 
I, I thought the way it was executed was perfect. But the show itself, I didn't find it that interesting. I tried to watch Miss um, Marvel. Okay. Um, that was horrible. I think I made it to two episodes and a half. And um, it's not... It's probably good. I don't know. I'm not a 12-year-old girl. So I, I just don't... I don't know if it would... If it's going to work for me as a grown-ass man. No. That 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 stuff was terrible. The pacing and everything was off as well. I thought... Don't get me wrong. It had good things about it. Like the style, the artistic vision of the actual episode. The editing and things was <laughs> was okay. Like, um, But other than that, it was absolute bullshit. Like, terrible show. Um so there will never be an occult study of miss marvel i'll give you one thing though it fell under the constellation <laughs> under the constellation cancer and pretty much that's what it felt like i was watching just a little bit of cancer all right uh, not not great so in essence people what, what i'm trying to say here is i'm absolutely stoked to see she hulk on the big screen anything that this character is in i'm gonna watch right um, I don't know how much MCU I'm going to be watching in the future. Um, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was absolutely terrible, okay? I couldn't believe how terrible it was. The girl that plays America Chavez, she's a cute kid, but she's one of the worst actresses I have ever seen in anything, right? <laughs> like, I couldn't believe that... that she, like get her in class some more. Get her, get her on the stage, all right. Put her in the theater real quick. Get her some experience out here, cause I don't know what where she comes from, what she's doing. She's the worst actor. And next to Benedict Cumberbatch, it stood out like a sore thumb, all right. Thor: Love and Thunder. I I went in with the lowest expectations after that, watching Doctor Strange, but it was better than I thought. Okay. It's the same type of thing as Thor Love and Thunder, uh, uh, Thor, Thor Ragnarok. The, the things that people don't like about th that Love and Thunder is the things I don't like about Ragnarok. It's the same thing. You've made everybody into a joke character. Um, I, I, I think Thor's universe as a joke isn't a good idea, personally. I don't think Thor is supposed to be a joke. I've never liked the idea of him being a joke. Um, but I'm rambling. Okay, I think I've finished talking about She-Hulk. I can't wait to see her. I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see all of the episodes. Okay, that's how I feel about it. She's one of my favorite Marvel characters. I've I haven't been gassed to see a Marvel show or movie since the Loki TV show. So, because Loki is also one of my favorite characters. Who would have thought? So, I'm in. Win. Well, good or bad, I'm into the end, uh, and, I, and I'm going to occult study, of course. Um, stay tuned to the channel, people. I've got some videos coming. I've got a few videos coming. I want to talk about Street Fighter Six, okay? Um, and I've and I'm doing a, a a video on Superman. All right. Um, I won't say too much about that, but um, my video on Superman will be dropping within a couple of days, maybe a week or so. All right, um, but stay tuned. Uh, this is Loki Man 07. Thank you for watching. Peace, people.